Hello and welcome to what is our first lesson, our first online lesson uh, for Year 7 Biology. We're going to be learning about balanced diets today and I just really wanted to start out and switch your brains on by having a look at this question that's on the board right now, or on your screen right now. What does the word diet mean? What does it mean to you? What, what sort of images does your brain conjure up when you hear the word diet? And a bit of a challenge at the bottom there, how long can the human body survive without eating any food? You might want to pause the video, write down your answer to the starter question. If you haven't already got pen and paper, you might want to grab that now. And make sure you've written down the title, Balanced Diet. Of course, you can also type up your notes as well. As far as the super challenge goes, you might want to, uh, as I said, pause the video and do a quick Google and see if you can't read some of the, uh, the hits that come up for how long can the human body survive without food. And we'll see if we read the same thing. Okay. The word diet um, is often used in, in two different ways in the English language. Most commonly, you'll probably hear relatives or on TV or even maybe your friends and family talking about going on a diet. Uh, going on a diet means actually controlling your diet. The word diet describes the food that you consume regularly. So the things that you eat regularly is your diet. Um, so when people say they're going on a diet, it means they're going to control what they eat and perhaps they're going to eat a little bit more healthily or they're going to lower their sugar or their carbohydrate intake. Um, so the word diet just means what you eat. So when we're talking about a balanced diet today, we're going to be talking about making sure what you eat is balanced, that you're getting the right amounts of the right food groups. And the super challenge, how long can the human body survive without food? When I googled that, um, I got a couple of different answers. Um, there was an answer about Gandhi who went on a food strike and lasted for almost a month without eating food. Um, and then you hear of other people that, that perish really quickly without food, uh, less than a week. Um, and really what most people seem to agree on the internet is um, it's different. It's different for different people. And how long the human body can survive without food really depends on that person, their health, their fitness, and their age, and their individual circumstances. Most hits on the internet seem to agree that water is more important than food. So you could only survive a day or day or two at max without water, whereas you can survive multiple days without food. Right, so our job for today, don't worry too much about all the information on this slide. Really, I just want you to focus on the fact that we're going to be looking at designing and describing a balanced meal, what that means um, in terms of naming key nutrient groups within your diet, explaining the importance why you must have a balanced diet and the implications if you don't, and trying to get you guys to the point where you can evaluate a meal and justify, give reasons for uh, whether you think it is a balanced meal or whether it's not a balanced meal. And we've got our key skills, our vocabulary at the bottom there. We're going to cover what each of those words mean today, so don't worry too much about those. Right, I hope you're ready. A balanced diet then. Um, as we've already said, you eat and drink lots of different foods every day and you need to do that to, to maintain health and stay healthy uh, and fit and fighting um, and eating lots of different foods and nutrients is what we call having a balanced diet. There are seven different components of a balanced diet. Um, we call them nutrient groups. I've listed all seven of them here but I've scrambled them up. So what you might want to do now is you might want to write down the numbers one to seven or type the numbers one to seven um, and then hit pause on the video and see if you can unscramble some of those words. I warn you number three is probably the easiest and rarely anyone ever gets number seven. So pause the video, have a look at the pictures and see if you can come up with what those seven words are, if you can unscramble those letters, if you can do that now. Right, fair warning. Okay, so I'm going to put the answers up on the screen in a moment. Uh, the challenge also at the bottom there was to suggest a food that could you could eat that has each of those nutrient groups within them. And if you did that challenge, we're going to go through that later on in the lesson so you can see how close you were. Right, the seven components of a balanced diet known as nutrient groups are as follows. Carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, fibre, and water and well done if you got any of those every year I do this and people complain how difficult it is to unscramble those but I find if you get one the others sort of 
fall into place because often you've heard these words before in PE or in your life or you've you've been looking at what you've been eating. Um, water is the one that people often miss out because for whatever reason it's just not spoken about as much as some of the others when it comes to uh, dieting or watching what you eat. Um, if you haven't already written those seven down, you might want to pause the video now and just write those down um, because we're going to talk about each one of those individually, what they do for the body and what kind of foods you could eat to make sure that you're, you've got those seven key groups in your diet. So again, you might want to pause the video and write those down if you haven't done so already. Right, moving on. Carbohydrates. So in each of these slides, you're going to see some pictures that represent foods that contain carbohydrates. You're going to see a list of foods that you could eat to make sure you've got some carbohydrate in your diet. And then at the bottom there, you'll see what they're needed for in the body. So for each slide, you might want to listen, um, but you might also wish to pause and write down the information next to your list of seven that you've already written down. So carbohydrates are needed for energy in your body. They break down into sugar when they're digested by your body. So they're often a quick hit um, of energy for your body. Not as quick as eating raw sugar, so they take some time to release the energy. Um, however, um, they are high in energy. So you want to avoid eating too many carbohydrates unless you live a very active lifestyle. So bread, pasta, fruit and vegetables, grains and cereal. In fruit and vegetables, plants in particular, the carbohydrates that they contain are called starch. So if you ever hear the word starch, starch is a carbohydrate, sugar itself is a carbohydrate. And there are a couple of other carbohydrates you might come across as you go through science. You might have heard of fructose or sucrose, um, as well as some others. Cellulose is another. Okay, next we're on to proteins. Proteins, again, um, uh, found in meat, fish, eggs, nuts and seeds and milk. And they're needed for growth and repair in your body. If you're young, you're doing a lot of growing. So you're going to need a lot of protein to make sure that you grow healthily um, and in line with what your body would normally be expected to do. Just on every day to day, your cells get damaged. That could be because you've um, uh, fallen over or it could just be that the cells themselves are old and in need of repair. Proteins in your body are broken down into amino acids. And amino acids are needed to repair damaged cells and they're also needed for building new proteins in your body which helps you grow. You make new proteins, you build new cells and you grow. Fats. Fats get a really bad reputation. Obviously eating too much fat is bad for you and it means that you'll gain weight um, and that could lead to obesity. Fats are found in butter and oil, nuts and cheese as well as many other foods but the pictures on the, on the board give you an idea on the board, I keep saying on the board, on the screen, um, give you an idea of the kind of foods that are high in fats. Fats are known as lipids, or fats are part of a group of um, uh, things called lipids. Lipids includes fats and oil. Um, they're needed for you in your body as a store of energy um, and for insulation. Um, so some animals that live in cold environments need lots of fat to insulate their bodies. That means to keep them warm um, when it's cold. Every diet needs some fat in it, so it's a common misconception that a healthy diet has no fat in it, but that's wrong. A balanced diet and a healthy diet does need to have a small amount of fat in it as well to keep you healthy. Vitamins. Vitamins and minerals are coming side by side, and they're often grouped together, but I've done them separately. Um, so vitamins are found in fruit, vegetables, and dairy foods. It's more and more common nowadays just to take a vitamin tablet or a vitamin supplement that has your daily recommended amount of each vitamin. And there are different vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E. I've put a big picture of vitamin C at the top here because pirates um, used to get a disease called scurvy. And that's because they had a lack of vitamin C. They had no fresh fruit or vegetables in their diet because pirates were often at sea for a long time. So they didn't have the opportunity to eat fresh fruit and vegetables. It gave them really bad teeth. Vitamins, all of them are needed to maintain your health. Vitamins are vital. That's where the vita part comes in, vitamins. They're vital um, for you to maintain health. The same with minerals. Minerals are also needed in smaller mates to maintain health, but for different reasons, and we're a bit more specific with minerals. You need salt in your body. You need milk, because milk contains the, the mineral calcium, which is needed for healthy bones and teeth. And you also need meat, 
for iron, but iron can also be obtained through supplements as well if you're a vegetarian and you don't eat meat. Fibre. Fibre is a weird one. Fibre is not digested by your body. So if you eat lots of fibre, your body doesn't get any nutrients from it as such. Um, fibre works as roughage, which means your body doesn't digest it. But what it does do is it moves through your digestive system along with everything else you've eaten and kind of bulks it all together and pushes it through your digestive system. If you don't have enough fibre in your diet, you become constipated. And what that means is you can't go to the toilet despite really needing to. Fibre can be found in lots of different foods. It can be found in vegetables and some fruits. It can be found in bran and it can be found in some whole milk products. Ignore the milk. Don't know why there's a picture of milk there. Um, so cereal, whole milk bread, brown bread um, and pasta um, are good sources of fibre. Water. Okay. Water is found in lots of different places. Obviously, the way humans live, we could just go turn the tap on and have ourselves a glass of water. You can also get water from fruit juice and milk, and I'm sure you drink a whole host of other things like energy drinks and squash and fizzy drinks, etc. All of these contain water, but they often contain other things as well. If your body doesn't get enough water, you might become dehydrated. Um, so dehydration means a lack of water, a lack of H2O. Water is needed for your cells and to maintain your cells and the chemical reactions that happen in them, but it's also needed for your body fluids like blood. Some animals don't drink much water, so if you think about lions and tigers, they eat a lot of meat, and they can often get a large proportion of the water they need just from the food that they eat. Of course, they can also drink water as well. Now that we've had a chance to go through each of the nutrient groups, you might want to pause and go back and take down the information from each of those slides. Um, but if you're ready, we're going to go through um, these three pictures on the screen right now. So I've put these three pictures up. Each picture represents one of or some of the, the food groups that we've just gone through, the nutrient groups. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to just pause your video. And whilst it's paused, I want you to make a list of each of the different nutrient groups that might be represented by the pictures on the board. So if you make a little bullet pointed list about each picture, which nutrient groups they contain, each picture has more than one answer for it. Okay, so don't worry if you're stuck between one or two. So if you pause the video now and see if you can come up with the nutrient groups for each of these pictures. Okay. So, hopefully you've come up with something like this. So, fruits, good source of water, vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates and fibre. The picture in the middle had some fish in there, some eggs, some cheese and some meat. Good sources of protein, fats and minerals. And then the picture on the furthest right there had some bread, potato and some pasta. Good sources of carbohydrates and fibre. So, it's just testing whether really that you've picked up um, where you can find each of these nutrient groups. I'm really emphasising the point that one food item might contain more than one of the nutrient groups within it. So a balanced meal. If you're going to be healthy, um, if you're going to grow, if you're going to be the best version of you that you can be, you need to have a balanced diet. And that starts by eating balanced meals. A balanced meal should contain a variety of different nutrient groups and not too much of any one in particular. There's a picture here that shows roughly what a balanced meal should look like. Half of it should be vegetables, good sources of fibre and vitamins, um, protein goods, so that could be meat or it could be nuts, um, and carbohydrates, so carbohydrates that could be pasta, it could be potato, it could be rice, it could be bread. It's different for everybody and not every meal has to be the same. The government have come up with your the GDA, which stands for your guidance daily amount, and that recommends how much of each nutrient group humans should eat each day. You might have seen a picture like this at the bottom on some of the food items that you buy. This is becoming more and more mandatory in UK supermarkets, so it tells you what percentage of your daily amount that, that food item contains of different food groups. It's not perfect though, so it has fats. But it has sugars, which we put under carbohydrates, and it has salts, which we put under minerals. Saturates is talking about fats still. And actually what makes this even trickier is not every human has the same guidance daily amount. So actually the daily recommended amount for men 
for, for fats and carbohydrates and proteins is often higher than what it is for women because uh, they tend to be larger. But again, that's just on average. It's not the same in every single case. If you're young, your, your recommended amounts tend to be higher um, because obviously you're more active and you're still growing. Um, if you're pregnant or if you're athletic, your amounts, recommended daily amounts, tend to be higher too. The older you are, the less active you are, the lower your recommended daily amounts for, for each um, uh, nutrient group. Now, I hate to do this to you because I know it's McDonald's have been closed for so long, but I did actually see on Facebook today that, that several McDonald's takeaway uh, are, are opening today. Um, but that doesn't mean get yourself down to McDonald's. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to have a look at the picture, really take a look at the picture or think about what is in McDonald's, what it is that you're eating. And I want you to think, is this a balanced meal? So what you've got to do is you've got to start by looking at the picture, looking at the food items you can see, what's in the burger, what's in the chips, what's in the drink, and breaking it down into the nutrient groups that are there. There is no right or wrong answer to this question. I will tell you that now. But what I'd like you to do is pause the video, have a think, is this a balanced meal? Write down what you think. Go for yes, go for no. And see what you come up with. Okay, good luck. Right, as I said to you, there is no right or wrong answer to this. I think we can all agree that eating McDonald's every day and only McDonald's every day is not a balanced diet and not 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 good for you. But in itself, if you have a look at this, is this a balanced meal? So you've got chips. Uh, chips have been fried in oil, so that's fats. The chips contain potato, which is carbohydrates. The bread, carbohydrates. But there's some seeds on top, which might contain um, some protein, although I doubt it. You've got some lettuce there, okay? So you can get some vitamins and some minerals. You've got some gherkins, which have been pickled. Uh, you've got some cheese, that's more fats. You've got the meat, which is going to contain protein, maybe some minerals if we're lucky. Um, but again, it's going to contain fats. You've got the drink, it's got water, but it's also got a lot of sugar and more carbohydrates in it. So really what you'd have to do is you'd have to go onto the McDonald's website and they've got the, the, the full detail for the meal, the amount of fats, the amount of sugar, the amount of carbohydrates um, in the meal to see whether it is actually a balanced meal or not. But on the surface, it doesn't look bad, but I think we can all agree that it's not good to eat too much McDonald's. Um, there is a high amount of fat and sugar in a lot of their, their, their food items. Um, but on the surface, if we just look at the foods that it contains, it could be considered to be quite balanced. The fact that it has a small amount of vegetables, um, some carbohydrates, but really it has far too much fat in it. Your last job as part of this lesson is to design a balanced meal. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to get a little bit creative. Um, so you can draw out a plate and a knife and fork like I've got up here. And then on this empty plate, I'd like you to draw some different food items to create a balanced meal. So what you need to do is draw and label some food items. You might have some spaghetti, some meat, some salad vegetables over here, um, uh, some cheese for your fats. Um, and for each thing that you draw, I'd like you to label the food so I know what it is. I'd like you to tell me why you've got it there. So you might have some bread because it contains some carbohydrates. Um, and then explain why you've put it there. Okay, bread contains carbohydrates which are needed for energy within the body. If you're super proud of your work or if you've done particularly well, or you've put a lot of time and effort into it, I'd like you to email your work if you can by taking a picture and sending it to Cowley Science Department so we can have a look at what you've done. But an absolute must is to now take yourself over to Educate and complete the quiz on this lesson. So I've aimed to cover answers to all of those questions within what we've gone through today. If you've got any problems logging on to Educate, again, just email the Cowley Science Department. You can find the full email address for that if you've not used it yet on the Cowley website. Um, we can reset your login details and get them sent to you via email. So lastly, just having a look through what we aim to achieve today. Hopefully, for, by watching this video, you can now name the key nutrient groups. You can explain the importance of a balanced diet and you can evaluate meals and justify whether or not that you think they are balanced. Okay, thanks for listening um, and stay tuned for our next lesson for biology. Thanks.